Now that we've converted all of the dead blocks in our game to board blocks where they're one by one squares, we can now remove a row if the entire row is filled with blocks. So I'm going to add a sub event for a system for loop. This is going to be for my row. And that's going to go from 1 to 20 because I have 20 rows. Then I'm going to add a sub event to this. Same thing except for column. So for loop, column in quotation marks. That's going to go from 1 to 10. And we need to set a variable for each of these. So I'm going to add a variable to my group called row. You can name it row1 if it won't let you put it in your group directly. Then I'll just move it down and rename it to row. Then I'm going to copy and paste that and change that to column. Go back to block conversion. Copy my row to loop index. I'm going to copy my column to loop index to both of those. Then I'm going to check if they're overlapping. So let's do the same thing here. I'm going to copy my pick overlapping. I'm going to add a blank sub event and I'm going to paste it there. Except instead of checking for dead blocks, I'm checking for the board blocks. And then what I want to do is I want to count how many are on each row. So I'm going to copy and paste my variable and I'm going to change this to row count. How many blocks are on each row? Which means every time I start a new row that needs to be reset to zero. So go to system, set value, row count should be zero. And under my pick board blocks, I should do system, add to, row count one. So every time I find a board block, I add one to my count. Now if I don't get to 10, nothing should happen. So at the end of each row, I want to check this. So that should be a sub event for the row, not the column. So add a sub event. This will be a system compare variable if my row count is equal to 10. So this should be underneath my for loop for the row, but not underneath the for loop for the column. Now when this happens, I need to know which row I'm at so that I can move all of the blocks above it down. So let's copy and paste to create another local variable. I'm gonna call this row num, and this will be the which row is being cleared. So here I'm going to do a system set value. My row num is going to be equal to my row. Whatever my current row is, that's what my row num should be. Now I need to loop through all the columns and delete all of the blocks on that row. So I'm going to add a blank sub event. I'm going to copy the loop for columns since I need to go through all of them. I copy and paste set column to loop index. Since our loops are based on the loop index, I can reuse the column variable without messing up this loop by changing the variable that we're using for this loop. I'm going to copy my pick board blocks because I want to pick the one that's at this location. So I'm going to add a blank sub event and paste that there. And here's where I'm going to want the board block to be destroyed. So that should erase them all when they all line up. So let's quickly check that. And it clears them, so that part is good. Now I need to move everything above it down. So that's going to be a, another sub event under my row count equals 10. Let's add a blank sub event to that. And here we're going to need to go from the row we're currently on all the way up to the top. So it's going to be similar to this, so let's copy our row and paste it. I'm going to copy my set row to loop index and paste that, except instead I want this to be row num minus loop index. So we're going to start at row num, loop index will be 1, and so that will be the row directly above our row. And then it will go backwards up to the beginning. Instead of going from 1 to 20, I can go from 1 to row num, because I don't actually need to go all the way to the bottom, I only need to go to the place where it was cleared. Now I need to do a column, so I'm going to select this column here, copy it, I'm going to add a blank sub event, I'm going to paste that here, 
can delete that blank sub event that got it on the right level now. Column is still going to be set to loop index, but instead of destroying these board blocks, I want to set the y value. That's going to be self.y plus block size. So it'll get moved down exactly one block. And that should be everything. So if we run that, and everything moved down exactly one square just as we wanted. If I were to run this as a debug, we'll see we're using about 4% of our CPU, uh, sometimes a little lower, sometimes as high as six. I'm going to add a blank sub event to the group, which will happen right after the loop. And I'm going to do a system set group remove row to deactivated. That way remove row will only run one time and then it will pause itself until the next time we need to check if a row needs to be removed, which should happen once we've converted our dead block to a board block down here. So now if we run it, we'll see that our CPU utilization is about half of what it used to be just from that simple change. So now it appears that the game is playable except for one minor issue. Right, so to fix this issue, we go back to block falling. And we switch the is overlapping with dead blocks to is overlapping with board blocks. And then after we fix the block falling, go into controls. And all of these that say dead blocks now need to be switched over to board blocks as well. Now all of our movement and the block falling by itself should be fixed. We'll now see that the pieces will go where they're supposed to. They land on top of each other, whether we hit space to make them go down or we wait for them to fall on top of another piece.